Gauteng Premier Panyaza Lusufian, dare I say, the most responsive of the lot. When I called this man, I was like, hey, Wena, hey, Wena, please. Did I you need say, to hey, Wena, <laughs> on the phone to the Premier? Let's no. discuss that for a second. <laughs> okay, I didn't say, hey, Wena, Wena, but I just said, hey. Yeah. Okay. Hey. State of the province address. It was just the other day. This is why we have you in here. Thank you so much for taking thank time so out. Much. Yeah, thank you for coming. And, and I'm saying, I, I put on heels, Wena, you, then you're just like, you know what, you're going to be casual. We need to, we need to brief each other what we're wearing because every now and then you come here in a suit i'm like what a distinguished man mm -hmm. i'm gonna put on heels okay oh, yeah, thank but you so much it's, it's because we, we catch him we, we, we sometimes we catch him in the building when he's on yeah. official business yeah. and now we've caught him before breakfast <laughs> you see so he he hasn't he hasn't dressed up and gone to the office yet that's what's happening okay so everybody's excited that you're here the lines were going mad people are sending in voice notes and uh frankie made a point i think the first thing we must do before we get into the conversation is we must discuss what is the role of the premier because there's things that people will come to complain to you and you're just like no that is not my jurisdiction what is the role of the premier of Gauteng thank you so much Anna. let me thank the team the hospitality the warm welcome is amazing I've cracked it some people wish to come here <laughs> <laughs> I've cracked it on here <laughs> I got the list is long <laughs> so thank you so much not to be a premier it's, um, it's just to coordinate the activities of government like the president mm. uh, you are just uh, a president of the province and on the base of that uh, you coordinate the budget, uh, which is massive. Uh, it's a uh, 17, 117 billion um, that you need to coordinate uh, uh, if you take all the other provinces and sort of other municipalities and other agencies that you have. You also have to ensure that uh, service delivery happens, especially mm -hmm. for critical institutions, education, uh, health, uh, roads, and safety. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you have to coordinate and put up the plans and other things. There are Obviously, other departments, I call them uh, departments that make us to be either happy or not happy, which is sports, arts, culture, which is very important as well. So the coordination of all these particular activities, uh, including attracting investment to a province, mm. makes the premiers work. Uh, can you see, and I'm developing you, gray hair as well. You, so you, you, for, so for that's a person, our task. For a person I've never seen with hair, you've got the receding hairline. <laughs> So it means the stress is yeah, quite there. Yeah, so yeah. when you're going towards the state of the province address, right, um, you know, what are your key issues? What are pressing, pressing issues? Do they change yearly or do you find that it is the same challenges that keep you up at night? No, they change yearly. Oh, okay. uh, uh, we've got different challenges almost every year. Uh, for example, two years ago, we didn't know we'd have COVID and it hit us and we had to okay. uh, change our plans. Um, a year later, we needed to then recover from it. So job creation and job, because many people lost their jobs. Mm. But there are things that are consistent. Uh, and one that irritates me, I must be honest, it irritates me. If there's something that will make me to resign, if I can't handle it, it's crime. Uh, yeah. our, our province is just crime ridden. Uh, we, we, we are scared of our own shadows. Uh, our houses are our own prisons. So that's where we need to invest our resources and our time. And then you have to create jobs. Uh, uh, lots and lots and lots of young people outside there are really without mm. jobs. But we have to start something which I hope after the 2024 elections, uh, whoever comes to power, we have to compete with the best in terms of uh, our infrastructure, improvement of our cities and towns, uh, creation of new tourism destination in our province, and most importantly, our transport mode. Uh, mm. we, we, we can't have this uh, congestion forever. So we need to have those speed trains. We need to have those uh, public transport system that is mm. reliable, dependable, and available. And we want post-2024 uh, to reposition ourselves. And there are many people that have interest. I've got friends that say that they've developed, for example, Dubai. They say, uh, Premier, we've reached uh, our limit. We really feel Gauteng is the next oh. area where we can develop. Can we partner? So we're in discussions with them. Singapore yeah. is another one that say, we really believe South Africans come here for water. South Africans just love water, anything with water. We mm. know you don't have uh, water in Gauteng, but we really believe we can just, like we did in Dubai and other areas, uh, put up some... Uh, 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 men or uh, women or mm. whatever created oceans or uh, beach fronts. So we are in discussions with people from Singapore who wants to do that. So please don't think that the premier is saying he's going to build a beach in Hong Kong. No, 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 no,
2024 after mm. these elections if we are in power are mm. those conversations that are happening at 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 your level at a presidential level you know within you know the government yeah. that we might not we might yeah. not win this are those conversations no, that no, are happening yeah they are, they are. i mean uh, we'll be naive not to uh-huh. uh, uh, obviously we want to work out uh, to ensure that we we, we come back but I mean, we adopted a very important uh, document, uh, Anele, called the Freedom Chart. It says the people shall govern. It didn't say the ANC shall govern. Uh It said the people shall govern. So we have to respect people's choices. Uh, If people choose another institution to govern, we just have to hand over whatever documents we have and say, Good luck and best wishes. And I'm one of those people that will do that uh, freely and openly. And you will go and you will just support Morocco yeah, Salas in peace. <laughs> <laughs> so something you said in the State of the Province yeah. address, I want to address it, the, the Gauteng panic buttons, right? Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up, you know, your yeah. biggest concern around crime. You yeah. know, Gauteng is crime ridden. But yeah. I mean, naturally, it, it is where with all the resources, the entire country flocks yeah. here economically, yeah. mm. you know, to try and make something of their lives. So when you speak to Gauteng panic buttons, just let's have a listen here quickly. Please. We have finalized the pilot project of e-panic button. Anyone that has a smartphone can go to an app store and download GPG panic button. When you press that panic button when you are under siege or under attack, we'll have close to 17,000 law enforcement agencies that will come to your rescue and assist you. I want to thank the private security companies, at no cost, they've agreed to participate in this project. Mm. Premier, I've I've got to say, because this is the, and we're looking at the panic button now, you've showed it what it looks like. (laughs) But but you know what I love about this? Because the panic button, um, one of our team members was saying, this is the kind of thing his wife would use. This is the kind of thing. She's been wanting something like this. She's been wanting to go running. She jogs, right? Yeah. Yeah. But but I think for me, what's interesting is the first thing we're talking about is it's a a collaboration between police plus Mm. private security, which I think the philosophy of you saying you want to improve safety in Gauteng. So we all have to work together. Yeah. We can't do private sector, public sector. And I want to thank the private security companies. At no cost, they said, Premier, we will participate. They've given us 15,000 private security companies. Whether it's in the township, it's in the suburbs, it's in the middle of Mahalis. So if you press it, whoever that is closer to you will pick it up from Mm. our command center. That's amazing. And it will dispatch that person. But we also have CCTV cameras. So the camera will then zoom at whoever has pressed the button. So that we know the kind of support you need. Do you need an ambulance or do you need soldiers mm. or do you need police mm. or you need first aid, whatever. Then by the time we come to you, we've got the solution already that we need to uh, provide to you. So that's, that's, the, that, that's the, the support we have. So it's, it's going live on the 1st of April. We've done that already. We've gone on a pilot for the last six months with teachers at school. That is why we could crack many school uh, violence-related oh. problems because teachers have it and other uh, 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 emergency workers that are driving ambulances. So if you panic, you press it. Will. But there are lessons that we have learned, so there are one or two things that you need to improve. But it's going live. Uh, 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 and other premier says to me, uh, Premier Lissouf, it means that if you are at a function and somebody press a panic button and we are all in crisis, you pick up a Houdian person and go and assist and leave our mm-hmm. citizens. I say, join if you want to join. Yeah, <laughs> but for yeah. now, but for now we'll prioritize citizens of Houghton. And of I, I am looking forward uh, for citizens of Houghton downloading the app. It's there already. You can go to App Store and say GB, uh, uh, GBP. Uh, GBP panic G- button. Yeah, it will come on the pops, uh, on, 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 on the uh, App Store. GBP, uh, sorry. Yeah, GPP, and- Anel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's it's one thing to have the app and the cameras, right? So that's great. Yeah. But as far as the app, and I know the official yeah. rollout starts in April, response times become important because currently people will tell you that turnaround time from when you call a police station often is so long that by the time police arrive, a person has died or an ambulance arrives, etc. That takes too long. How, do we know how much the app will help bring down response time? How quickly will emergency services respond? And that's the reason why we are saying we are launching in April. So we have to o- ho- overhaul all police cars so that we can put the app in the car. So you don't have to phone the police station and the police station have to call you or call 10 triple one and then someone have to. So all the nearest cars that are closer mm-hmm. to you, when you press it, it will be in a pos- they will be in a position, just like an Uber, when you... you, mm-hmm. you, you mm-hmm. 
uh, 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 you want uh, Uber. Whoever is nearest will then pick it up and come and collect you. This is how it's going to work. So the technology is there, but uh, my concern comes in, you know, the culture behind it. So we, we, we've got the 15,000 respondents. We've got yeah. the app there that's going to merge everyone. Um, the people who are responding, I find there's a despondency in our emergency service uh, respondents where... It, it, is, it is a cultural change that has to happen in them because, I mean, all of us go through a slump. We're like, oh, I don't yeah. like this. I'm tired of this country. I'm tired of this. Are we doing something to make sure that, you know, the culture fit is, is we are reigniting the pride it, that is required to serve as one of the 15,000 who are responding? Anel, I spent sleepless night on this. I have to fight for budget for this. No. I have to get the best technology. I can't do an hour on the doorstep. And have people that are not responding to these mm. things. Mm. I'll be disappointed. Trust me, the new sheriff is in town. This must work. And I tell the team, it must work. And if it can't work, the door is open. They must leave. It's either it work or they leave. I can't, we, we can't invest this amount of money for something that is not going to be uh, mm. uh, uh, executed or something that is not going to be Because ultimately, it's the people who make it it's work. The so granted, it's an effort. So they have, they, yeah. we have to make it work. We have to protect our citizens. The problem with criminals, they know they can come and mark your phone because they know it will take time for us to respond. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if we can defeat that mentality, they know if they come into a house when they're fast asleep, mm. the quickest thing is to do whatever they do. By the time the police and law enforcement response, they're gone. Mm. We, if we can intervene at that level, then the fight against crime is gone. We'll not win that fight. And this is part of that initiative to ensure that we do. That is why I've invested in drones. That is why I invested in helicopters. You can't do that because check a cash in heist. They just close the highways and the mm. police can't arrive mm. there. So now that we've got drones, now that we've got helicopters, we can be in a position to respond. So I want citizens of Houghton, trust me on this one. Uh, let's have the 1st of April. May I'll be here when we launch it. <laughs> Uh, so that citizens can really test it and ensure that it works. Listen, on the way, we speak ETOLS because a huge, huge <laughs> statement was made about ETOLS at State of the Province Address. Yes. One that I welcomed <laughs> with both my arms and both my legs, Perfect. okay? And then, of course, speaking jobs as well, something called yeah. Nasty Spine. I want to talk yes. about that as well with the Premier of Gauteng. Quick one, I was talking about how everything pulls together. I mean, we're going to a general election in May, yeah. but ultimately... What happens at local government level with the cities? We've seen the coalitions that aren't functioning, mm. roads that aren't working, the inner city that's a mess. Traffic lights it all collapse. influences, does it not, how we feel about the province and the country and ultimately what the outcome will be. It's true. We suffer the consequences of those decisions. Uh, if the road is not fixed, people don't say it's local government. Mm. Uh, mm. They will blame either provincial and national government and uh, we pay the price. It's just unfortunate, but... That's the reality of our constitution. Mm. Yeah. Okay, speaking of roads, mm. you made a, a, a very a status you're filled with hope, uh, filled with uh, with happiness at the state of the province address. It was around the eats halls. Have you listened yeah. to what the premier said? All of us now have reached an agreement that by the 31st of March this year, the formal process to switch off and de-link eats halls will begin and it also will be history in our province. Okay, people are clapping there. They're representing the entire province when, <laughs> when you said that, right? Yeah, because this is our ex that just won't go away. <laughs> like, this is Most the ex true. just sticking around here. But That's now, true. Premier, two years ago, the finance minister made the statement as well, and nothing has happened since he said that. What makes your statement different? What, what due diligence have you done? I, we I also made that statement, and oh. I must say, I must not remove myself there. When we made that announcement, we had a principal agreement to say, okay, you take the cost, which is 70%. We owe, when we built this uh, ETOLS, uh, we went to the market and said, borrow us for one billion. Uh. So we paid that for one billion. And they said, how will you pay that for one billion? We said, every motorist that is using the roads will pay a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Me and you, we know, motorists said, mm -mm. we're not paying. We're not doing that. Uh, we are not paying. So government had to pay the interest and pay back the amount on behalf of motorists. Mm. So when we took a decision that now we are cutting off this, that's when the minister said, Houting is agreed, they will pay 30% of this cost, we'll pay 70%. As national and the, government. Yes, national government. Okay. So the minister then announced, the e tolls will be switched off. But when we went to people that we, bo we borrowed the money, they said, no, no, no. It does not work that way. Show us the money first. And national oh. treasury came to us and said, no, the borrowers say, you are saying you are taking 30%. How will you pay it back? Because... You said motorists will pay. They didn't pay. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to fall in the same trap. So, so we had to go to the market and go and borrow money as holding to pay our 30% 
to convince the borrowers that we have borrowed it, here it yes, is, here, it here is. is the letter. So the process of checking who can give us the 30% reasonably within the same time without costing us took us long. Um, now that we have signed that, it's done. It's now. done. Uh, that is why we are making this announcement to say we will switch them off. It was not easy. The bargaining was tough, but at least finally we've got the money. We've shown the person that we owe will pay you. Here's an agreement. And they've accepted it. Hence, we are saying the e tolls are now history. Without promoting belligerence from us, but yeah. is this an example of the people governing? Because you guys said you will pay, and we said no, we won't. And ultimately, we didn't. Well, any government that does not listen to its constituents is a meaningless government. Okay. So if people said um, uh, we need to agree that we are not paying, uh, we have to maneuver and accept that. But the consequences are, se are severe. Mm -hmm. I must be honest. It's not mm -hmm. easy. Because there are people that paid. Yeah. There are people that said, regardless of whether we don't like this, we are paying. Okay. Because we are true citizens. And what happens to them? And there are people and there are companies like your car hire companies. Mm -hmm. They've been they've uh, been paying. Yeah. Uh, you know? And there are millions that have not been paying. So you have to balance that. And when the announcement is say from the first of March, it means from the first of March, we need to apply our mind on how best we are going mm. to balance that quagmire. And in balancing that, balancing all of that, are you yeah. factoring in a scenario possibly where people who have paid, even though there was this resistance, get money back? What happens to people who, for example, had e-tags, have not paid, but reality is they're sitting with a bill? Do you write that off? For now, we want to pay the debt so mm. that this thing is off and then we'll come back and consult society on how best to be level that balance. And I don't want to make the same mistake. <laughs> <laughs> of making statements, <laughs> of making statements that will, will create problems for us. But for now, let's have this thing off the road. And I really believe it's going to be off the mark uh, when March comes. And emit, I, I hope, and I'm crossing my fingers, that also the Minister of Finance today will then confirm that what we've given them is how they to say we are ready to pay mm. and we want to pay this way. And the National Treasurer will say we accept what Gauteng is proposing. And on the basis of that, switch them off and then reutilize them because the infrastructure is very important. Reutilize mm. them to fight crime. And uh, we'll come back to that statement of whether uh, we are sorting out those that have paid and those that have not paid. For our last three minutes, we're speaking jobs. Nasi is fine. is something that si, was also... Si, peace, fine. Si, Nasi is fine. We are proud to declare 40,000 young people who were not successful in Nasi is all those that have applied for Nasi Spani and they were in their last year in terms of their degrees and they could not conclude their degrees, the government that I have the honor to lead will pay for their fees so that they can go and conclude their degrees and ensure that they finish and have their honor. Okay, this sounds very lofty. Um, it, it, it sounds like Martin Luther King, I have a dream. I'm not going to lie. So what are you saying with Nasi Spani? I was in my final year. Um, academically, I was achieving. I ran out of finance to pay uh, yeah. to finish my degree. Yeah. What happens to me under this umbrella of Nasi Spani? We'll finish your degree. We'll pay for your fees and finish your degree. The problem with Nasi Spani is that we, we advertised uh, almost, say, 30,000 posts. We received 1.3 million. Uh, mm. application oh. but the majority of the 1.3 million is people that have not finished their degree so they don't qualify for a job so even if you want to give the job mm. they don't meet the criteria because they're not qualified so if you can then finish your degree then you qualify you get a job you are no longer a burden of the state but you go to the townships as well mm. uh, i mean we, we had a post uh, that i always make an example of uh, a receptionist it's mm. one post we receive 43,000 applications it's one post so how do you shortlist so what we are saying that whoever didn't make it when you advertise for Nasi Spani, uh. you are in your final year of, of your university degree, we will pay the last cost so that you qualify, or you owe a university, you have not received your results because you still owe the university. If we pay, then you get your degree, then you are... We are no longer, uh, so okay. we are providing that kind of support. So I now, mean. help me out here, because this may, yeah. may be a local government, provincial and national thing. But when you say we're going to pay the last year of your degree, surely this is also, uh, where does NEFSAS fit in this? Because it is the failure of NEFSAS that made sure that these kids could not finish their degrees, yeah. right? The so, problem with uh, NEFSAS is that, Anneli, if you fail, they don't pay you. And we have sentenced you to poverty. We want to intervene at that level. Do you get my point? No, so, I don't. So Remember, how do the speak two run like I'm, yeah. I'm in grade, uh, at the same tell time? Tell me like I'm in grade two. How do, yes, how does Nasi Spani and NEFSAS work 
next to each other. Maybe let's that's say, what I'm asking. Let's say you're doing a Bachelor of Science yeah. degree. And the Bachelor of Science degree, you need to qualify by passing mathematics. Yes. You have failed mathematics. Because yes. you have failed mathematics, NEFSAS terminates your buzzer. Okay. And because you can't afford to go back to university to go and study maths to, degree, to conclude your studies, we are coming to say we will pay for you to go and study that maths. And when you pass that maths, you've got a degree, then you can apply for jobs. But so what I then is, is the criteria? Because NISFAS has, for the example, a threshold for income. Those... There's also criteria for academic performance. Do you pay as much attention to that? Or is it a lower threshold with you? Our criteria is that you should have applied for NASI SPAN. Mm. That's the only criteria. If you applied for NASI SPAN, you've got your database. We know this one. Mm. We want this person to be a scientist. Mm. We want to hire you as a scientist, but you've got only one subject that is remaining. But uh. you don't have money to go mm. back and study for that subject. We will give you money, study, pass, and then we'll hire you mm. as a scientist in our department. But as welcome as that is, Premier, it's mm. only solving half the problem, isn't it? Because yeah. in South Africa, government is the single largest employer, yes. not sustainable. That's yeah. why even the language has moved to creation of job opportunities yeah. in the political party manifestos. You're sitting with a degree. We know hundreds of thousands of young people yeah. are. How then do we make sure that actual prospects of walking into work exist? Yeah. Well, it's many. The problem is that you can't have one solution that fits everything. Mm. You have to give multi solutions. Uh, the other one, which is massive to me, uh, unfortunately, the media didn't pick it up. But I really believe it's massive. We are saying in the township panel, mm. you go to the township now. The townships are dead. They are potholes. Clinics are, uh, that wanted to build are unfinished. Schools that wanted to... But there are young people that are unemployed there. The reason why those buildings stay unfinished is because there are no skills that mm. can finish. So we are taking 40,000 people in the township. We have acquired space in TVET colleges and skills uh, centers to train them as artisans, electricians, to train them as plumbers, to train them to fix roads. While they have been trained, mm. we are giving them a stipend. And then when they qualify... We will employ them to go and fix the townships with all those particular areas. 40,000 of them. That's a first in our province. And we really believe our lover, as a Lokshin, yeah. all of them mm. will move from Panzgum to Nzuelanga and get an opportunity to be employed. This is the intervention that we are making as the Houghton Provincial Government. Okay, so you know what? What I don't want to do is I don't want to have a problem for every solution because that's another problem with us media when it comes yeah. to government, when yeah. it comes to, you know, the ideas you have and you put forward. When is Nasispan going to go live? Because the other one is 1st of April. Um, and then this one, when is this one going live? Oh, no, 1st March. 1st March. First okay, March, March. so what we're going to do first is March. we are going to keep you accountable. Please, yeah, we are going free. to keep you. And this is, in fact, the only thing that people that are keeping me accountable, they get tired because I run faster. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he wore sneakers today and allowed me to wear heels. Absolutely. Yeah. Premier, thank you so much for I your time. You, uh, you know, we, we, we have you. run out of time thank and, you. you know, as the building is quite excited that you're here. So oh, clearly you're doing you. something right. No, we support you. you. No, we, no, we shall I, I hold know, you accountable, no, but you we to, definitely support times. you. Yes. And we must move forward together. That's the only way, especially on crime. Mm. Good people, if you can't fight crime in Gauteng, we'll never fight crime in South Africa. Anywhere else. And if you can't get the right solution to crime, the beautiful country that we claim is our country, mm. will be gone. So the first enemy that we have, all of us, no one will invest in a crime ridden and no one will bring their families into our province if crime is the way it is. Let's defeat crime. Oi, oi, 947. <laughs> together forever. And no Thank one you. talks after the premiere, so this guy <laughs> now. That's it, that's Goodbye. It. That's it. <laughs>